Hello and welcome to another Acrylico tutorial. Before we move on, I'd like to thank our patrons and the Rivet for their support. Please subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell to support us into making more tutorials. And for more, you can check out our Patreon with different tiers to offer all touch designer files, online tools to create generative art, as well as personalized classes. I will leave the link in the description for anyone who is interested. Now back to the tutorial, make sure to watch until the end, there's going to be many tips and tricks which you can use for your future projects. So we're going to start with an instancing setup, which will be slightly different from our usual since we'll be using the primitive sock. So let's press tab and we'll create a box sock. Right after, let's attach the primitive sock. The primitive sock can be used to manipulate the shape's position, size, orientation, color, alpha, as well as it lets you create custom primitive attributes. We'll see how this works in a minute, but basically the box we created in the beginning is not a primitive in itself, but the faces of the box are. So now, different from a typical transform, where any type of transformation will apply to the whole structure, using the primitive sock will allow us to apply changes to the faces of the box separately, like illustrated here. Now for the render, let's attach a geometry after the primitive sock, followed by a camera comp, a light comp and a render top. At the end of the network, let's attach a null and turn the display flag on. I'll split the screen, set the second screen to top viewer and I'll right click on the left screen to disable the backdrop tops. So now that we have the box, let's open the parameter window of the render top, go to the comment tab and set the resolution to 1280 by 1280. And as always, let's attach an RGB key before the null top to get a black background. Then let's go to the camera parameter window, open the view tab and we'll set the projection to be orthographic. Then back to the primitive sub, go to the transform tab and we'll allow transformations by toggling on the do transformation parameter. And now, as we mentioned before, if we decrease the scale value, this will result in all six faces of the box to scale down simultaneously. We cannot notice this right away in our render because of the camera position as well as the lack of the material. So we're going to fix this and slightly change the camera position. Then let's attach a line material and then we're going to drag and drop it onto the geo and select parameter material. Great, now on to the actual instances. First let's go to the geo and in the instance tab we're going to toggle on the instancing. Now from here we want to drag the instances with a pattern chop. So let's go ahead and create a pattern chop. Here we want to determine two things. First is going to be the number of instances which we can determine with a length parameter. And we want 5 instances so we'll set this value to 5. And the second thing we want to determine is the size of the instances. We will do this with a type of pattern. So we'll set the type to ramp and we see here in the node that the values of the ramp go from 0 to 1. The problem is if the value starts at 0, it means the size will be 0 and that particular instance will be invisible. So to avoid this, let's set the offsets to 1 and this will offset the whole value segment to take values between 1 and 2. From here, let's go to the channel tab and we'll rename it to size. We'll connect a null at the end of the network, rename the null to instance data and I'll color it red for clarity. Now we'll drag this instance data and drop it as a default instance operator of the geo. Then we'll set the size on all three directions as the size channel we determined before on the ramp pattern. For the whole shape to fit in the view, let's go back to the camera comp, open the view tab and increase the ortho width value to around 3.41. Great, so next we want to get the movement going and afterwards we're going to make the faces solid so we don't see the edges overlapping. So let's start with the movement. Let's copy paste the pattern chop and in the channel tab we'll rename this to rot y since we want to rotate in the y direction. Then in the network above we'll attach a merge chop after the pattern chop and we'll have both patterns as inputs. Once we have this, we go back to the instance page of the geo and set the rotate Y to rot Y. Great, so now we have the rotation connected to the pattern chop and with the phase parameter we can control the degree of rotation. In the beginning this will not give us the desired result since by default the amplitude is set to 1. So if we instead change this to 360 degrees, then we can use the phase value to actually rotate the whole shape. And this is exactly what we wanted. But if you remember in the beginning of the video, the instances were moving independently from one another. So how do we do this? We go back to the chops, right click after the bottom pattern chop, go to insert operator and we'll add a filter chop to smooth things out. 
First, in the parameter window, we'll toggle on filter per sample. This way, the filter will be applied to each sample of the channel instead of across the whole channel. Next, we'll increase the filter width to two units. This will add a delay in the movement. Let's see with a little illustration how this value will affect the animation. When the filter width is set to zero, there is no separated movement of the instances at all. When the filter width is on a slightly higher value, like one or two, the instances will rotate really fast and back to the original position before the next instance starts rotating. Whereas if we set the value really high, like 16 units for example, the first instances will start rotating slow enough that they will not manage to go back to the original position before the next instances start moving. So this will cause a messier but still interesting movement which might be worth exploring. Okay, so back to the project, now we can actually animate the movement. And as the phase value, we'll type in abs time that seconds time 0.1. So now we have a slow general rotation, as well as the faster rotation of the instances one after the other. Great, now all that's left to do is fix the faces so they're not see-through. So what we're going to do is make some space here below the geo and we're going to copy paste it down below. Now because we copy pasted this, the line material is still going to both geos, but we want another solid material to go to the second one. So let's instead create a funk material and then drag and drop it to the second geo and select parameter material. In the parameter window, let's change the diffuse color to completely black, but in here you could actually choose any other color you like. Great, so now we actually have the basic animation and what I want to show you is a little trick on how to make this into a perfect loop. Now in our network, we only have one expression which is making the whole thing dynamic, which is the expression we wrote here in the phase of the pattern. So we see if we delete this and put a constant like zero, the whole rotation will stop. And to make it into a perfect loop, we can instead write me.time.frame, which will give us the current frame we're in. And then we'll divide all of this by me.time.end, which will give us the total amount of frames that the animation has. And the whole expression will give us a fraction of the timeline. So now we can change the speed of the animation by changing either the length or the FPS value. So for example, if we set the FPS to 30, this will cause the video to be twice as long and the movement to be twice as slow. And this is also how we will get a perfect loop. Great, now before we finish, I have a little assignment for you to try out since everyone is always asking about audio reactive animation. The animation we did until now, I turned it audio reactive with only a few steps and the result was this. A little hint here, what I used for the audio reactivity was a camera setting. And I was thinking I'll give you a few seconds to pause the video so you can try to replicate this on your own and then you can come back for the solution. Welcome back and let's see the solution. If you managed to recreate this, well done, this is amazing. And if you didn't manage to, also don't worry, you can watch the solution and try this out in your future projects to solidify the knowledge. So you remember in the beginning of the tutorial, we switched the projection view to orthographic. Among the other options here, there's also the perspective to ortho blend, which when selected will automatically enable the projection blend parameter down below. And this is the parameter we will use to make the animation audio reactive. So to begin with, we import an audio file you like and you want to have in the animation. After the audio file, we attach an audio spectrum. And after the audio spectrum, we add an analyze. Back at the audio, we toggle on the mono. And in the parameter window of the analyze, we set the function to RMS power. At the end of the network, we add a null. Before the null, we add a math, and in the parameter window, we go to multi-add and multiply by 5. Then we turn the null view reactive and drag and drop it onto the projection blend parameter of the camera. And there we already have an audio reactive animation. From here, we just need to fix a couple of things. Like we notice, for example, on subparts that the whole thing disappears. 
And this is because the values are flipping. So we added limit before the null, we set the type to clamp and the minimum value to zero. And another thing that is bothering me here is that the reactivity is too abrupt. So to smoothen it out, we will use the filter chop. And here the parameter we're looking for is again the filter width. And as we discussed before, the higher the filter width, the slower the movement. By default, the filter width is set to one and we'll decrease this instead to around 0.25 and this will give us enough feathering. And this was it for the solution and for the tutorial. Please let me know if you actually like the format of the little assignment at the end of the tutorial and if we should keep doing them. Also let me know whether you'd like us to put the solution right at the end of the video or rather on next week's video so you will have a little more time to come up with the solution. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching until the end. Please subscribe to the channel, that would really help us a lot. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll see you very soon with another tutorial. Until then, have a great time. Bye!